you'll need a spiker table, a C-arm, stock in it, or pantaloon liner, two, three, and four inch web drill and fiberglass, a cast saw, stapler or tapes, and assistance. This is a two-year-old female child who underwent a left femoral neck biopsy followed by one and a half spiker cast application. A stock in it is folded over itself and then placed around the body from the armpits to the mid-thigh. Three or four folded towels are placed underneath the stock in it. Ideally, the folded towels should end at around the level of the belly button so that an anchor point can be achieved for the cast around the pelvis. You don't want to pull the towers all the way through, otherwise you would not get a snug fit around the pelvis. Instead of a stockinette, a Gore-Tex liner or a pantaloon liner can be used. Since this liner is waterproof and breathable, it avoids skin issues in young children or in those kids where contamination of the cast is a possibility. It is placed like a bunny suit over the legs the abdomen and the chest wall. The patient is then mounted on a well padded spiker table. The length is adjusted so that the kid is against the perineal post and the superior edge of the table is at the level of the nipples. Make sure that the patient is well secured and that the arm is well padded. One can see how the superior aspect of the spine post is at the level of the nipple line. Make sure the stock in it is over the bar that supports the spine as well as the lower back. Otherwise, you won't be able to get the child off the table. For proper positioning, the foot and the hip should be in the same plane. At all edges of the cast, apply at least four layers of padding and apply the padding snugly. Make sure the padding extends all the way down to the perineal post. Start applying figure of 8 padding around the pelvis and the thigh. This helps to reinforce the cast. You come across the inner thigh, then across the pelvis and up across the other thigh. Make sure to apply about 4 layers of padding across the inner thigh since it is considered to be an edge. Reinforce further around this area to prevent an impingement of the cast. Cover all skin areas with adequate padding since fiberglass can stick to the skin. All the bony prominences are well padded, including the patella, the femoral condyles, the fibular neck, the malleoli, and the heel. The foot and the ankle should be in a neutral position as you apply the padding. You apply minimal padding on the dorsum of the ankle, but adequate padding should be applied around the heel. Make sure the position of all the joints are where you like them to be at the end. One should not change the position of the joint or the leg after the padding is applied. On the contralateral side, 
the cast padding is applied over the mid thigh to prevent impinging against the back of the knee. When you start with the fiberglass cast, leave an inch of webril exposed at the edges so that when the stockinette is folded over, a soft pillow edge is obtained. The body part is applied twice before proceeding to the leg part of the cast. A figure of eight reinforcement is then applied using the fiberglass just like it was done with the padding. The word spica is Latin for ear of wheat which represents the figure of eight technique of cast reinforcement. While putting the cast and during molding, use the flat of your hand and not your fingertips. Also remember to maintain the position of the leg. At this time, one can go ahead and complete the leg portion of the spica cast. The excess stockinette is cut and folded over and a few layers of fiberglass are applied. The foot is held in neutral position with the flat of the hand. The foot can also be left out of the cast and a cylinder cast could be applied. The contralateral thigh part of the cast is also completed at this time. The weakest part of the cast is the internal triangle, the triangle which is formed at the intersection of the torso and the leg part of the spiker cast. The internal triangle is reinforced by using 18 inch long slats formed by about three or four layers of fiberglass. The slats are dropped around the inner thigh close to the perineal post in a way that it covers the internal triangle and then they are further locked in by rolls of fiberglass. The same maneuver is repeated on the contralateral side. The C-arm is used intermittently to verify the reduction of the fracture or position of the hip. The cast is checked and once it's dried, the spiker table is then unlocked. The lower part of the table is pulled distally and the patient is pulled gently in the southern direction. As the patient is supported adequately, the spiker table is then carefully removed. Make sure the patient's heel touches the bed. Next is the trimming of the cast. An abdominal window can be cut out to relieve the pressure and prevent cast syndrome or the mesenteric artery syndrome. Around the perineum, the cast is cut on the medial aspect of the thigh to achieve an area that's four finger breadth wide. Before using the cast saw, the face is covered with a towel. The cast is trimmed from the umbilicus in the front to the top of the gluteal cleft in the back. The medial thigh part is trimmed for adequate diaper care. Instead of an abdominal window, the top part of the cast can be trimmed to achieve the same purpose. All sharp edges of the cast are trimmed. Excessive trimming can weaken the cast and hence only necessary trimming is performed. Again, four finger breadth wide area is obtained. On the top, the towels and the cutout would allow adequate space for thoracic and abdominal expansion. The towels are then removed. Make sure you have enough room and both fingers can touch each other.
The patient is then log rolled onto the unaffected side and posterior trimming is continued. The cut from the anterior trimming is connected posteriorly till the top of the gluteal cleft is exposed. Trimming should not extend lateral to the mid buttocks to maintain adequate integrity of the cast. The stockinet is folded over and stapled to the cast. Once the stockinet edges are folded over, another layer of fiberglass would be applied. If one is concerned about the strength of the cast, a bar can be added at this time. The bar could be either a wooden bar or it could be a St. Louis arch made by twisting of fiberglass material. The pink tape can be applied over the edges of the cast as shown here, especially when a Gore-Tex liner is used. Secure all edges of the stockinet with a couple of layers of fiberglass. Moleskin can be applied to petal the cast at this time. The best cast is applied in the operating room and not the emergency room as assistance is of utmost importance. The assistant can either sit on the table, stand on the edge of the table, or an assistant can stand on each side of the table. The Spica table is a modular table with an armrest, spine support and perineal post. The traditional spica table has metal parts which can interfere with fluoroscopic imaging as shown here. The newer radiolucent tables have the advantage of allowing adequate radiographic visualization as seen in this case. One should not accept an improper cast and should avoid improper positioning during cast application. The commonest complications of spica cast are skin issues, pressure sores, and malunion or shortening. This three-year-old had soiled the spica and had significant skin issues and underwent elastic nailing as an alternative treatment. Spica casts are not waterproof if wet. They should be removed and the skin should be treated with a moisturizing lotion like Equifor.